Funky music. <laughs> right? Why not? Good. Where's the applause? Do I have to add it in as an effect? Oh. <laughs> yeah, you have that, to. That was good. That was really good today. I like you it. Know, I, uh, I guess I do that to entertain myself. <laughs> I Very entertaining. Wow. Hey, so I have to explain to our um, listeners, watchers, why I have shades on. So just suffering from a little eye eye infection don't want to scare everybody away i think that's one of the benefits of doing these things remotely right we don't we don't expose each other to eye infections transmissible eye infections if that's yeah i mean mo what most would call it pink eye because you call it pink eye until you know what it is <laughs> <laughs> oh hey here he comes you know i was i was i was hoping that uh that bra would be uh, doing lead vocals on our song, but I guess you missed out, dude. Play that funky. Yeah. Play that oh. funky music. Howdy. Rob Tiffany. Hey, how's it going, man? Good. How are you doing? Yeah, he's Good. essentially the only white boy on the panel, so it, it's he, fitting. Really? Yeah, wow. you know what? Well, I mean, wow. Mark. Do it again. Do it again. Oh. Huh? No. <laughs> Too you much have effort. to explain to him. He was playing the uh, his guitar earlier. Play that funky music, white boy. Excellent, yeah. excellent. Yes. <laughs> Good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so uh. we're going to be talking about POC. Um, and, POC hell, right? POC hell, and how to just avoid it. And I guess why don't we kick it off uh, with this question: Is why do so many IOT initiatives start off with a POC, or how do they get into these POC hells? Well, you know, lots of projects, software or otherwise, have POCs. That's not unusual, um, you know. Um, and you have you have sales and pre-sales people who are talking to customers to try to get a sale done. And a lot of times, you know, the customer wants to do a some kind of proof of concept of some kind. Um, certainly did a zillion of those at Microsoft and other places. And so that was kind of normal. You don't want to go too far. And there's always, and depending on the kind of company you're in, you're kind of like, are we giving these away? Are we getting a paid POC? I hear talk like that all the time. And yeah. are, you know, are we being, is our company, our little company being drained by customers who are yeah. like sucking life? And then you also have a, in rare occasions, or I don't know, maybe not so rare, sometimes you find that the customer is looking for ideas that they're going to copy themselves uh, when yeah. you do POCs, which really sucks, but you see it all no. the time. Yeah. Well, you, you see that with people doing stuff with uh, RFPs, right? They'll yeah. do RFP, they'll, you know, um, take the ideas that the consultant submits and then they... AM yeah, it. you know it's free consulting, right? Yeah, I, it happens all the time. Dave, <laughs> David, Mark, I mean, are you guys still doing POCs? Is that how you guys lead in with your sales? <laughs> uh, no, look, I know, I know there. To stick to to the initial question, and another reason they fail is that you know in the organization again, whether this is sales, pre-sales, Mark, you know, someone in the organization might not necessarily believe wholeheartedly in this product and this solution. And as part of that disconnect and interfacing with the customer, they actually push the value onto the POC as if the objective was to just deliver a POC instead of having the conversation of, you know, what could this POC mean in terms of deploying something of value? 
And when you have those uh, those beginnings in the conversation, that POC is doomed from the beginning. Right, right. But where do you guys find that these POC start in the the sort of this continuum of the project, though? I mean, obviously, there's initial interest or, or someone in the organization has said, hey, look, we got to do some kind of IoT stuff because it's going to be really cool and is it going to uh, help us make our numbers or do whatever? I mean, where, where in the continuum do we see these POCs really getting initiated? And maybe think of it in terms of like the enterprise or the enterprise buyer versus uh, what you guys might be, uh, the way that you guys might be thinking of it as a, a vendor or a service provider. So I would answer this, that the way they get initiated, you, uh, so I, I'll, and I'll go back to the folks that interface directly with the customer. I mean, look, we, we have, at, uh, and other companies, not, not only uh, my shop, but we have really good people that understand uh, the customer. They understand the customer's business, their challenges, their regulatory competitive environment. And when you have that, that uh, intrinsic knowledge of the, of the challenge you're trying to solve, the POC conversation is very different because now it's like, I know that we can solve this problem. And instead of me just trying to send you a kit for this POC, the conversation turns into, let me host you into this lab or virtual environment or test bed that I've stood up because I want we want the customer to have skin in the game, right? That they understand that they're going into this POC seeking a, um, a positive business outcome. And when the POC enables this initial piece of evidence, that gets customers excited. And that's usually a, a good beginning to this POC uh, being paid, right? Someone making money, a transaction happening, and, and things scaling. So um, that's how I would answer that one, Leonard. So, Mark, I mean, why, why yeah, do we from, do these friggin' POCs to begin with? How do we get stuck in would, goals? Yeah, I would classify it in, in two ways, the POCs. Um, one that comes from the innovation department of the company, and the other one that doesn't come from the innovation department. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> the one that comes from the innovation department, you know that it's 99% of the time it's not going to... It's not going to work uh, after the, the POC unless the innovation manager or whatever is, is a, like a very big decision maker on the company. And it really makes sense, the business model of the, of, yeah, they discover that it makes sense for uh, any reason, ABC. Okay. <laughs> then the other type of POCs that don't belong to the innovation department or research and development, um, they can come from operations or, or similar departments. And, and then you need to show that there is, a, at least from my experience, that there is a real business opportunity there doing that POC. So what they say is, yeah, sure, the Excel that you show us makes sense, but um, yeah, let's, let's try it. Let's try it with few units. And I discovered that few units in Spain, it's, it's less than 10. In Europe, it's uh, more than 10. And sometimes in the U.S. it's more than 100. So the POCs, uh, I, I don't know in Asia, I don't have any experience there on POCs. But um, yeah, it's hard to do a POC with less than 10 units because yeah, you don't, it's hard to, yeah, to find patterns and so on. But anyway, if, um, if this POC has a business model related and it really makes sense and, and with the POC, you can demonstrate that then you have chance chances to yeah to get into the next level, mm -hmm. but yeah then yeah and it depends if it's a very big company you get into the RFP situation, mm -hmm. and then it always depends as well if your PO, if your project uh, connects different departments. So I have examples of, for example, um, yeah like uh, lost uh, containers from a very a very big logistic companies they were losing containers that were very expensive and for the operations director it was no brainer to make to to move this project from poc to like a big project but actually the the the, the manager who was acquiring or or uh, who were uh, so 
once these containers had GPS, so there was another department who had to go to, to pick up those containers. So that department, they say, no way, we prefer to buy them, even if the business model is, is worse for us in a worse situation. But so it depends as well the, on the decision makers, uh, their influence, and so on. Right. So By the way, that's my they, experience. They have an innovation department in enterprises? I didn't know that. Believe it or not. Well, at least. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> you know, part of the POC thing, too, has to do with the uh, the maturity of the technology that you're proposing. Um, like, if it's something that's more bleeding edge or new, even if it's maybe not new to you, but it's new to them, they there's a level of trust. And so they feel like they need a POC versus some mature thing that's been around forever that they're just like, no. Yeah. I don't need to do a POC for your email server. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, actually, this is how SaaS, uh, no, software as a service, had succeeded, right? Very quick, because yeah, you can start with a POC, but with a freemium accounts, right? As well, the freemium model. Yeah. Um, with the freemium, and then that's a POC, and if it works, yeah, they they become premium. Right. That's what, right. That's what I was going to ask. Is is I see different vendors have different definitions of. POCs versus a trial, whether they're going to pay for it or demonstrate something for free and prove, you know, prove it's worthy or have a small investment, you know, now and then show the scalability or start to scale later when, once you kind of prove things. So do you, I mean, some of you guys have, are, are much more closer to the vendor community or your own companies. Do you guys delineate or have differences between that in terms of fees versus free I don't know. <laughs> my ex yeah, on my experience, um, for example, when I was going to sell with um, partnering with a telco, with Telefonica, mm -hmm. all the customers were used to get free uh, trials or free technology. Like this. they were used to, for example, Telefonica had uh, no these um, bonus to sell uh, Cisco routers. So yeah, they they were getting all the customers were getting free Cisco routers to test. Mm. Um, so yeah, once that we got far into a project, yeah, they wanted the POC for free. And we say no, mm. but yeah, that that sometimes happens when you go to other companies. The other POCs that we have made, the, the customers paid. No, that that was not a problem. I don't think that a, P, a successful POC can start with a free with a free POC. But I don't know if anyone has a different experience. Well, I agree. You know, in telco, uh, you know, obviously it's uh, we, we live and die by the roadmap. And, and the reality is if there's something interesting um, that we can test that could fit something that we have in the roadmap that needs more development anyway, uh, this is an area where it's good to the, to uh, figure out how do we test this new kit, solution, hardware, software, whatever, regardless whether we pay for it or not. I mean, the, the, for back to my classic words have meaning, proof of concept, right? A proof of concept doesn't necessarily need to be attached to a commercial term, but we need to be able to prove out that, you know, it, it could do what it does. So I think from, uh, you know, l large companies, uh, you know, especially on, on the telco side, just, you know, find a way to test proof and disprove uh, because, you know, a lot of us get, you know, a lot of vendor requests, like, Hey, I can do this for you. I can do this for you. I can do this for you. And mm. you know, it's uh, that that's, that's also overwhelming. So, mm. yeah. I was going to say when I met with, um, the, the folks that run the peach tree corners, you know, innovation center and all of that, they, you know, they have a long list of vendors that they invite, um, they said, okay, we've got a uh, team. It used to be sprint. Now it's T-Mobile's 5g, we have all of these, we have all the infrastructure and we have the network set up and all of you, you know, they have different vendors that want to play with their services on top of that. And, you know, they have autonomy, you know, a portion of the roads autonomous They have, you know, a host setup of the city. So they're essentially inviting a lot of different vendors to come in and say, okay, you, you say you can do this. We have a, you know, essentially a virtual reality or even a full setup of city or road or infrastructure. So you can come in and, test things out. Let's see what you have and let's see if it works. And so they have like a whole range of products that range, that some are really early in the game. They're just trying to test things out. And then there's some that already have completely proven technology. And then they have 
different um, businesses as well as government entities in and around that city or that county or whatever that are already using the services um, based on all, you know, the different phases that they've gone through with that innovation center. So it, it, I thought that was an interesting piece. I think it's very expensive for them and what they've done and what they have to manage and set up. But it, it's definitely an ideal situation because I think a lot of cities really struggle with that because generally from what I'm hearing on the city side is they want to do everything for free. Um, I mean, that's it. They want zero funded um, smart city projects, which you know, there are different ways and different models to do that, but um, it's putting a lot of pressure, I think, on the vendors to to find yeah. a way to how to actually make money doing this. Yeah, that smart, that smart city space is tough, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> but I, I just no wanted money. to inject <laughs> some perspective uh, that was shared by our friend Rick. Uh, he said, forget POCs, don't do them, just do it, you know? Um, what do you guys think about that? Well, what, what what is the value? I mean, what is ultimately the value of a POC and why is Rick completely discounting the necessity for a POC? He's just saying, I mean, I have my idea and I, I think I know where he's coming from, but what do you guys think? I think he's just talking a good game. I think it just it's back to maturity of the product. You're established how your company that's providing the product, that kind of stuff. You know, if you're a, especially if you're a startup or you're building something new or you're small, yeah. it, you don't get to you don't get to dictate stuff like that. You know, you're right. hungry for sales and you absolutely are going to do the POCs. And it may it may be for nothing, but you'll do them mm -hmm. to try to get the sale. So, and you'll say you want them paid, but if they say they won't pay, you'll find yourself doing them anyway for free. And it sucks. But, you know, whereas a big company can sit back and kind of dictate, well, no, we're not going to do that. Mm. Um, yeah, so I think in a lot of, I think, say, in a lot of situations, the customers are drive, you know, they're driving that decision. They hold a lot of cards. Yeah. But I think that if, like, the maturity is is a big piece because if it's already proven and you already have, instead of doing POCs, you're showing actually, you can let them talk to actual customers or, or show actual customers and how much money has been saved and even do a lot of just demonstrations around that. You just have a, you have a much higher chance of not even throw that POC out the window, but that you're again, Rob, you're right. It comes at the maturity level. If it's already proven, it's something simple, plug and play in terms of how much money is going to be saved or time saved or whatever, then and they have the funds. To, I think that you jump right in, but yeah. there's too many companies that are not willing to take the risk. And with our volatile financial environment right now, I think that that takes a lot of that out, that risk taking out of the equation mm -hmm. for businesses that just can't afford to take risks, spend money on things without having a POC in place. And well, everything. You know, here's the thing. I, I think the, the question for me is uh, when we say POC hell, is it hell for the vendor or is it hell for the the enterprise? You know, and and we always hear, well, we're perpetually stuck in this POC purgatory. Uh, you know, wh so, who? So it, it, let it, me. And, and so I think it's important. So here's the thing. Uh, back in the day when I used to do a lot of ERP stuff, the upfront strategy stuff, we used POCs to prove technology during the vendor selection phase, right? This is very, very early on. This is before we actually committed to, uh, you know, implementing anything. So this was the selection between, um, you know, Oracle versus SAP versus PeopleSoft or whatever, right? And so you would have these POCs to prove out certain technical concepts uh, that would be associated with um, the requirements of the uh, client, but also, uh, you know, uh, uh, it would consider the the um, and customer's environment as well, right? And so that's what the purpose of the POC was. Um, you know, what's really curious about a POC in the IoT realm, it, it seems like you're trying to prove out technology uh, it, rather than um, really try to associate and build out 
the value proposition that will actually get uh, you know some sort of transformation, uh, meaningful transformation happening within the, the client organization, right? And so I think yeah. POCs are completely misplaced, and I think I, I will uh, side with. Um, well, I'm, I won't completely side with Rick it, it, I, in saying that POCs are worthless. This is well, you as an enterprise understand when they're useful and you know what. POCs were traditionally used for in traditional transformation projects and methodologies, which are still very valid. There's nothing that Agile has done to change any of this stuff. In fact, I think, uh, you know, all this hoopla about, you know, Agile this and Agile that, that has kind of screwed things up and probably is the reason why we're in POC hell. Something to think about. You know, let's just talk about. I mean, yeah, specifically this POC hell with IoT is really specific, um, and why we live in there. <clears throat> you know, we always talk about these blockers to adoption around IoT. You know, why hasn't it taken off like we planned? You know, p people say they're terrified of security issues. They're talking about complexity. They're talking about the variety of different skill sets that you have to have since IoT is made up of so many different disparate components. It's not like I'm going to hire an app developer and they're going to build an iPhone app and that's it. Uh, IoT is so complex with so many different things. And so you have to have all these skills across all these different domains to put the whole thing together. And I think all that stuff is why we live in that prolonged POC hell instead of getting production. I'm a big believer that as much as 80 or more percent, I might be wrong, of a, a IoT project is spent doing low value activities. And we've talked about this before. If I'm doing a project to deliver some outcome, I'm gonna save money, make money, safety, whatever it is. But my consultants, cause IOT is a consulting gig. Don't make any mistake about that. My consultants who are doing the gig on the project, they are spending all their time configuring and programming devices and mm -hmm. configuring and registering devices with some IOT platform. And they're spending the smallest amount of time building the actual solution, the app, the outcome, that's why the customer wants to do the project in the first place. And so it sucks. And, it, and so we've got to fix that. We've got to strip out that 80% of non-valuable work on the device side, on the platform side, so that we can just, and I know it's easy for me to say that and it's hard to do, but we've got to do it. Um, so we can just focus on that app, that solution uh, that brings the value to the customer. Um, you know, we've got to assuage customers who are terrified, you know, they're, you know, after they saw like the Mirai botnet thing several years ago, and when they realized that they've created the largest attack surface in the history of computing, they're afraid of that. We need to help assuage their fears there and chill them out on that. So there's so many roadblocks and so many things that are going to prolong us getting to value. The customer kind of believes that there's gold in the hills somewhere, but it's just a long road to hoe to get to there. And so I, I think folks should oh. focus on chopping out those yeah but rob, rob i i i think for enterprises there is gold in iot right in the solutions because it solves problems where where the gold is elusive is for the vendors and the various ecosystem players who are looking at these but you know these big numbers for the market opportunity for iot that we were talking about before we jumped on this call uh, those are the folks who are uh, having trouble figuring out where the gold is, right? I mean, you know, if you can cost down 10% uh, in your manufacturing because you've made it more intelligent, connected, and IoT enabled, that's gold, you know? Um, and you can realize that with the IoT Pareto, 80% of the value you can get from 20% of whatever it is your va vendor is trying to sell to you, right? So for the enterprises, I think um, there's a tremendous opportunity. The question is, why are the vendors having such a hard time selling through? Uh, are we confusing them with all the techno talk? Because, you know, I wrote a paper a long time ago called, if you want to get value out of IT, stop talking about IoT. Just let's focus on, you know, what's really going to fund these transformation projects. And the POC, 
um, to Rick's point, may not be the the point that we start with, even as a vendor, right? And I think one of the things that vendors aren't doing a good job of is really figuring out what their role is uh, within the context of uh, number one, an IoT solution. Uh, not knowing what that role is properly doesn't allow them to partner or en- uh, with the right you know folks or engage with the right levels or people within a, a customer's organization. I think that's where this whole POC thing has just gone bonkers in the wrong direction. And I gotta really take off. Today. I gotta take off, y'all. Okay. Good chat All with right, you. Man. Yep. Adios. I was Adios. Say to you, I, I, I'm. I think about the value chain. I think about the Ericsons of the world. And, you know, they know their value proposition. You know, they have this infrastructure. They have the connectivity piece, right? I think as you get closer to the customer, figuring out the business models, the way you're going to make money, because this is a multiplayer game, that's where I think that it gets hosed and we have challenges because everyone wants to make money doing this, right? And so... In the end, there's a lot of selfish, you know, motives that are involved in this. As you get closer to the customer, you know, what are the what is the customer what is the customer going to pay? Essentially, uh, will dictate what those relationships kind of are with those vendors providing that solution. Who is the point person? Um, is it the carrier? Is it an integrator? Is it someone else that's involved in that value chain? So I think you have to kind of look at the value chain. But if you start with the, the base foundation, the connectivity and the infrastructure piece, those guys have a lot more things kind of solidified. Yeah, but, but, and know, it, it's challenging. Yeah. But, you know, so, something to hide, I think uh, something that uh, Stephanie and Leonard, you guys should just mention in, in um in, in regards of POCs and, and the value and such, but you know, there's a very big difference if I am a an, an, an IoT, let's just say an IoT maker, and I have four solutions, and that's all I do. I have mm-hmm. these four solutions for these four outcomes in this one vertical, and I don't do anything else. And then you have someone bigger who who has the the, the same four, but they have other things that could be of value. And something that happens is if I am the larger org. And I have these four things that work well in this niche market. And, you know, as part of the process, I find something else is like, oh, you know, we can also do this because I've got this. And that gets convoluted really quickly. And that's another problem with the POCs. There will be an advantage to the uh, business that has solutions. And even if they sound cookie cutter, like uh, I've got asset tracking. But that's okay. Um, so p- part of the part of the failure sometimes is induced because I think Stephanie, you mentioned this. You know, thinking about the large companies is, oh, there is something else I might be able to make part of 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 this thing, and that that is not always a good intentions because uh, obviously, if we find something of value to a customer, you should communicate that. That's that's a good intention. Um, also, you know, compensation drives behavior, I always say. Um, but, you know, in the, grand, in the grand scheme of things, that is that brings issues to, um, to the success of, of POCs when there's something else and something else and something else I can do instead of focusing on this one outcome so that I can show value so that we can uh, establish trust. And the next time I'll be like, hey, we did this. It worked out. You got value. Now I want to talk about these other three things. That approach is, is better than trying to bring things up during the but, walk. But David, that's cross-selling, right? Or upselling? Yes, yes, absolutely. Don't and stop, it's good. Don't stop, yeah. <laughs> don't stop the mean, business. It's, no. It's the business You're developers right, to the cross-selling. You're right, Mark. And it's actually how I run my business. I say, I work with the customer. I figure out what we're going to do. It's set in stage. I don't, I don't veer off of it. They don't veer off of it. But in the end, if we decide there are other things that we could spin off and do, we don't let that lose focus for what we originally started. And if you end up doing that, you confuse the customers. You're not simplifying things. You're bringing complexity. In the end, you have a customer that's going to be dissatisfied. So if you do not... I agree. I agree with you. So so maybe... That simplification and, and really... I, I was just kidding. <laughs> no, but, but look, I, I was joking. 
It's, it's let, a good let, point. let me explain you. No, my experience. Actually, I have bad experience with telcos. So let me tell you another experience with the telcos. We are shocked. So, <laughs> <laughs> so no, no, no. It's not a bad experience, but it's understanding how they work. Their the model. No, the business developers actually they they are uh, incentivized uh, for selling a specific products. No, every mm -hmm. semester. So, of course, they are cross-selling because the IoT, it's not why they are um, incentivized to sell. So every time uh, a business developer call me like, hey, we have this IoT project. Ah, cool. What's about that? Yeah, but I'm selling as well these, these, and that. But why, why are you selling that? No, because why are you selling iPhones to this customer? No, they need an asset tracking system. No, because, yeah, I, I got bonus if, uh, no, this semester if I sell 100 uh, iPhones to this company. So yeah, this is the problem. Yeah, it's it's one of the problems. Yeah. On the other hand, yeah, also other experiences that I found. It's when you're a decision maker, but you have like a tiny budget. Yeah, you cannot afford to do like a complete IoT project. So you have to yeah do a POC. This is a, no your IoT project is a POC because you don't have more budget. And when right. you go to the yeah to the to the board or whatever to request for budget for making the IoT project real. If they say no every year, so that's <laughs> I, I. We used to have a customer that was top one in the world with millions of um, products in the world, and they had an IoT project uh, eight years after they launched the project internally, and they had only two hundred yeah. uh, devices of millions in the in well, the market. I, 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 I want to be uh, clear on the record and with my hand on uh, on my heart. Cross selling, I'm not knocking it finding additional ways of bringing value to a customer and your company, I am not knocking it. But in the context of today's topic of why POCs go to hell, yeah. you have to do this at the right time. There, that's what I'm saying. Do it just at the well, right time. Can we focus on one thing without, without, without doing this? That's, <laughs> that's it, just to be clear. Cross-sell all day. Pull through. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what i think pocs fail or we fall into these pits uh for all the reasons uh that mark just outlined you know we we take a bottoms up approach we think that there's going to be some citizen innovator that's going to be able to sell through uh this large tra valuable transformation by uh, engaging, you know, basically building it themselves and then with this tiny budget that they might have and then showing the rest of the organization. And the reason why uh, these POC efforts go largely nowhere is because the approach doesn't work. I mean, maybe that's what we have to consider, but that's what we get taught in B school. It's like, hey, look, you need to have a flat organization and, oh, business leaders, you need to uh, empower teams and blah, blah, blah. But does that really work? And from a practical standpoint, do you really encounter enterprises that have read all these papers from HBS professors that espouse all kinds of, you know, neo concepts? Uh, do you see these things working out um, for people who are actually uh, developing solutions and are trying to go to market with them? You know, um, and I, it goes. I go back to what I was saying before. Back in the day when we were doing POCs, we 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 there was already a transformation project, a value proposition that was already bought into, and there were consultants, not engineers, or a technologist uh, who worked with executive stakeholders who actually have dinero uh, to buy into the investment in these initiatives, and it was done top down. And for the uh, you know, well, there was money in it for the vendors. That's how you yeah. have the Deloitte's and the Accentures and the blah blah blahs of the world, right? Um, so. Uh, you know, and that, 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 that's the that's the thing. It's uh, so given that the POC approach doesn't seem to be all that groovy, maybe uh, the smaller players need to think a little bit differently about how they go to market. And the POC concept may not be as effective as, um, you know, we they might have been led to believe or right. their so impulses uh, drove them to. 
uh, to uh, think, hey, this is a uh, this is how we go to market, you know. So, what are some POC approaches that are working? Because surely, you know, it, the, someone watching this, you know, uh, in a couple of hours from, um, you know, from now, that's part of the community, you know, maybe there is something that for them is working very, very well. So, it's not all it's not all doom and gloom, you yeah. know. The I, I've seen. Uh, you know, especially on the uh, on the industrial application, the industrial software side, uh, you know, one of the things that and it's it, it's easy and it's cool, but basically the ability to stand up an environment. And let's just say my value proposition is I optimize machines X and that's what it is. And uh, so some of the things that I've seen success in is that there's uh, an environment where this uh, developer uh, has set up where they are able to ingest um, data and it could be all data from the customer, uh, or they just know the machines. So Stephanie, I know you have this type of conveyor belt. So I'm going to use time series data from the same conveyor belt that, you know, but I'm going to give you this, uh, this demonstration and being led with that, I'm talking about a demo here, but mm -hmm. you know, building that, uh, credibility is really, really good ahead of Stephanie actually buying kit and bringing it to her shop floor anywhere near that uh, that conveyor belt. So there are some good pre-POC practices uh, that work better than just try this, it's in the mail, and I, I, I hope you open it. And do you open it? Do you charge it? Do you put it in the thing? Much, much different. Right. Yeah, is it plug and play? <laughs> it, it, and I wonder, look, with... I mean, because gosh, demos can really make a difference whether you're there live. And of course, a lot of people love that live show me and COVID says, nope, that ain't, that's not happening. So <laughs> um, you got to be able to plug and play and make it extremely simple for the customer to visually see or plug and play so they can play with some things themselves. But if they have to charge something or load software or do this, it's just too many steps people get bogged down and like i'm not doing that right now you know yeah the, the, there's also the um and i think this is more on the on the freemium topic um buyers are more informed now than ever and and i don't care what it is that you're buying but most buyers are probably doing but by, by uh they're they're getting to about 80 percent of the decision journey by themselves online doing research i don't care whether we're buying cars or cnc machines right so those uh vendor suppliers uh that make it eat that understand this and make this demo or poc see with that context like hey we know you've know all this do this and plug and play and and find it for yourself or hey, we have a pay trial. It's uh, you know, it's 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 five grand for you know a quarter, and after that, take it or leave it. You know, there's uh, with a one page contract that basically says that like, hey, you're buying this for one quarter, and if you don't renew on ninety first day, that's it. Like stuff like that. Those also seem to uh, you know at least get get POCs going. It sounds to me that it's been a pretty common theme that you've mentioned, David, and that's the simpli simplification, staying focused, making it very easy for the customer and um, not convoluting the POC with other things. We're not we're not in a full sales mode right now. We're, we're in this to showcase what we can do and our value proposition. And we're going to start at point A and we expect the results to be point Z. And then we'll, we'll reflect on that. We'll showcase that. And we'd love to do business with you. And I think that if you can get to a point where you're simplifying things and you're not making it complicated for the customer or cumbersome for the customer, then, you know, maybe you could clean some of that up for that purgatory hill or whatever you're going to be <laughs> yeah. and uh, make it easy for the customer. Customers are just they're too busy. You're right. They're so informed. Don't waste their time. Um mm. There's a lot of things that need to be considered around that to take and ease their pain. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know if customers are all that well informed. Um, I think the people who have the purse strings are not. Um, they rely on people who are technical or who supposedly know the stuff uh, to support their decision making. And so I, there's there's a path to the 
purse strings. And again, going back to what is a POC and what is it valuable for, uh, you know, traditionally, and it, it, it's to prove that the solution worked is more than a demo, right? A demo is just look here. This is this is what it looks like and feels like. POC is about well, this is how this solution can work and is technically viable or even functionally viable within the context of your business, right? Uh, and, and so we just need to be clear about it. I guess my only message to uh, the listeners is this, is if you're a vendor, um, if you're a vendor, you know, plug in at the right, position yourself in the right way. Just doing POCs doesn't get you through the door. That's why, you know, so many POCs go nowhere. Uh, and, um, you know, so many uh, quote unquote projects don't succeed. If you're an enterprise, um, you know, uh, follow, work with the uh, uh, solution architect uh, and get them involved very early on to, to build out a viable and compelling business case for investment. And, you know, get that budget. Because once that budget is there, uh, you know, there then there's going to be uh investment in the actual initiative and that's where uh, you know you can bring people in to start um progressively elaborating the solution in detail and that's where at some point where you're looking to uh select technologies where you might ask some of these vendor candidate vendors to do a poc but you know i, I I still see POCs being relevant as an exercise uh, during the, the vendor selection process. I'll, it's not really a tool to ideate through the solution or to, uh, to um, it's not an exercise to build out the value proposition, the purpose and the why of the investment basically, right? And without that front piece, you know, none of the other stuff is really going to yield much. Right. If, if your your idea of using a POC to educate people um, is uh, you know sort of this uh, tenant that you're subscribing to um, for POC, with that. I think it might be misguided. I mean, it's just my thought. I mean, you, uh, that that's just my counterpoint to what, what. Yeah, I don't know. I disagree with you. I think that a vendor. I mean, I think that an enterprise is not going to do a POC for the vendor selection process and, and do this with multiple vendors, it's not happening. It's already cumbersome to do one. Um, it's going to be after they've narrowed it down to one or two. Yeah. Um, it, it's just not going to be as part of their research process and say, Hey, let's do five POCs of work. I just don't see no, that. No, I, no, I no, honestly don't even exactly see them. Doing they, they do it. You, you, you might have, you might start off with a vendor list of 20 and then you're going to whittle it down to two or three that are, are going to be the short list. And then you, yeah. but what I'm saying is I don't think that they're going to do th two or three. I mean, I think it's going to be challenging to do two or three POCs. I think that they make a decision and then they start to test things out with their vendor of choice. It's just a lot of coordinating because if you're if you're really thinking through some of these larger um, rollouts, the, the, it's definitely more than one vendor involved. And then you've got your people involved. We've talked about this all of 2020 was all of the people problem with this. It's, there's so many heads that are involved or and vendors that come to come to the table yeah. that it. it I don't know. I mean, I think that um, if you have a more simplified and clear cut POC um, to bring to the table, then maybe if we get to that point, then maybe you can really evaluate more than one. <laughs> but we're not there. I'll, I'll say this. If you're if you're the business, Stop. if you're the enterprise that uh, that is going to entertain one, two, three, four, five POCs for a specific thing. By the time you get to the end of the POC, whatever that market you are following is gone. It's gone. Like so, what's what what's what's the point? Um, so you know, maybe maybe uh, Rick's point is uh, don't be a coward. Don't do POCs. <laughs> yeah, just, uh, just don't be a coward. Well, yeah, I, I agree and disagree, but that's what what makes this fun. I love that, Stephanie. Thank you. <laughs> It'd be so well, boring so, if we uh, always agreed with each other.
And you know, you've got your big um, Ericsson event today, right? Super stoked. Yeah. Very, very stoked about that one. Maybe awesome. I'll listen in and um, be one of the crowd uh, hecklers. <laughs> don't ask Don't ask any tough questions. I'll pass them <laughs> over to Rob. Or I will not. I might sit back and listen, but I will not heckle you. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm out of coffee, so it's about that time. And uh, Stephanie, you want to take us out? Well, yeah. So essentially, we're going to continue to live in this purgatory, this hell. Um, COVID hell or, or POC hell? <laughs> I don't know. You're in the middle or you're actually already in hell. I think and the and I think a lot of the feedback that we've seen it's a lot of, a lot of this hell the perception is really on the vendor side. <laughs> the enterprise usually they hold all the cards. Uh, they want simplification. They want it to be easy. Stop making it hard on them. Try to simplify the process. Try not to go off all of these uh, unbeaten paths. Try not to to sway and and get distracted. And you'll probably be in a lot better position if you could go back and reevaluate what you're offering and what your value proposition is for the POC and clean that up and learn from all of the, the activities that you already have in place from the previous year. Um, make it easier, make it better, improve your situation. I think that that's all we can do right now. And until we get to the maturity levels on a lot of these solutions and use cases, we're just going to continue to be in this in this mode. So that's. That's the theme of 2021. We're going to keep it positive, right? Yep. All day. <laughs> all year. Uh, thank God Rob's not here. Otherwise, he'd be drinking from the cup half full. Yes. <laughs> That's okay. Okay. Well, uh, thanks for listening, everyone. Um, remember to subscribe uh, to our um our webcast here on youtube and uh follow us at www.iotcoffeetalk.com um do they call it squash or punch or the like button smash smash the like button subscribe i already said that and we'll see you next week and next week we will be talking about uh, we decided that we're going to talk about sensor networks, sensor yeah, technology. It's yes. really exciting. So uh, make sure that you tune in and we will see you next week. Stay safe, stay healthy, and stay out of POC, purgatory, hell, whatever. <laughs> right. Bye, guys. Bye. Take care. Bye.